Hey guys, Omni here, welcome back, and may the fourth be with you. Today, we're gonna be diving into Tales of the Empire. With this choice of characters to focus on here, I'm really interested in what the underlying theme is going to be, like, because with uh, Tales of the Jedi, with Dooku and Ahsoka, two people who have become disillusioned with the Jedi Order themselves and took two very radically different approaches to how they handled that disillusionment and how they handled those cracks and flaws that they perceived in the order itself and reacted to in very different ways. It was really interesting to see that evolve and really interested to see how Morgan Elsbeth and Barriss Offee, how their stories kind of interconnect or bounce and play off of one another if they do at all. So I'm excited to get into this guys. That all said, let's get ready to jump in. So if you want to see the full length reaction, as always, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you're going to be able to channel, get you access as well. It is a watch along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up the time codes and reaction to the entire episode. Over there, you get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover on the channel. You also get to suggest and vote on what movies we react to each month. We got monthly Q&As, behind the scenes footage, and trying to make it worth your while. So you're always for the channel. But guys, at the end of the day, I really appreciate it. Enjoy this reaction. Delete, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. And with that all said and out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into episode one. The Path of Fear. Here we go. <laughs> Skies of Dathomir, I presume? Oh. Is this... Yeah. Grievous' assault on the sisters. I love those bows, man. Stand your ground. Let's go. Come on. Oh. Stay back. Setting up the wrong time. Yo. I love the wailing and screaming whenever. She swings the blades. God damn, let's go. See, I love expanding upon these different ways that people manipulate the force and the energies of this world. Give me all the Night Sister content you can give me. I hope one day, either in animation or in live action, we can get to see Marin outside of the games. Other arms. Mother. God damn, that's. Oh my god. Wow. Nope, almost. These things are crazy. Imagine if this is what they mass produced and not the regular battle droids. Wow, that is haunting. His cackling while everybody around you is burning and dying. Oh, so they just presume she's dead because she passed out. What an opening. What a start. The path of fear. Be calm. You are under the protection of the Mountain Clan now. Mountain Clan? The power of the Night Sisters broken. Their spells have faded. You're fortunate oh. to be alive. Come, let me show you what this dark day has wrought. So there's other mystical tribes on Dathomir as well. I don't know if we knew that or not. If we did, I just, I don't remember. I'm afraid. Wow. Left of your people. Hearing that raspy fuck haunting your dreams, it's gotta suck. What if they come looking for us in the mountains? That's not going to happen. 
I'm sure her clan didn't think it would happen either. Do not give your fear such fertile ground to take root. The droids are still hunting. <sighs> We're safe enough here in the mountains. You would think. Your friends are right to be scared. Your way of life will no longer be enough to protect your people. I could help you. You need only ask. Talking about that fear. I watched. She's my tempting die. her into are giving in to it. For the same, knowing there was more you could have done to prevent it. Wow. Her pain, her lingering, her survival has kind of in and of itself become this infection in, in this tribe. What troubles you, my child? Do you think the droids will leave us alone? As long as we leave them. It's just, if they came, how would we defend ourselves if- I hear Morgan Elspeth's words on your lips. We must trust our path. Gotta love that do nothing attitude. What's going on? They've asked for my help. As a precaution. Morgan has some weapons. We should trust our way. There's no harm in looking. Are you coming or not? It's spreading. But it is extremely naive to believe that if you left the, the droids alone, that they would just leave you alone. The fact that you guys are alive right now is pretty much oh there we go only because they don't know about you ironically enough they now do because they followed her Nani? yeah They're gonna expose themselves because they left. Oh. God, man. What are the point of blasters, man? What the fuck? <laughs> like, whoa! Oh. Holy shit! <sighs> wow! You must not assume, just because someone does not want to fight, that they are not capable now. Where is my daughter? I'm uh, pretty sure they're all... Well, okay, she's she's alive. The other two, I do not think so. Mother, our way is true. I'm sorry. Wow. This is what fear brings. It appears your path is set, Morgan Elspeth. I pity you, for I can see what is to come. Wow. Damn, what a shot to end on too. That was good, that was good. Just how that response to like seeing everything that she had fall apart, collapse and that fear and how she let that fear spread to these other people who were more than capable, though she didn't see it. You know, obviously the other people also had that fear, but because of that, they were led astray from their faith in what they had set up and that led them to being caught you know them leaving the safety of the confines of their mountain they went down and then exposed themselves and then in turn started this whole thing and that was all because of her own intervention Th that that itch to like face off what she fears returning you know that that haunting voice of grievous the fires and the blaster bolts flying like the sounds that she heard as she passed out before they found her it's just echoing, echoing in her head and it's festering. It's like a wound. It's like a virus that's multiplying and building. And then she becomes that same thing. Like they said here, that's what the path that you will be locked into will be. As we know how she ends as well. Everything she does, every decision she makes is about the survival of her people. 
and the reclamation of it to the point she hears those voices off in the distance in Ahsoka and seeks to unite herself with Thrawn to kind of make sure to manifest that goal. And then the savior of the Knight Sisters as a people as they cart away all those bodies in Thrawn's ship and cart them back into the main galaxy. You know, that that was her purpose. But in the end, she didn't get to really see that happen. And with this being the path of fear, I'm wondering if we're going to go continue on into like the path of anger, the path of hatred, the path of suffering, and so on and so forth. I didn't look at the episode title, so I, I don't know. I'm just making a stab right now. That all said, though, let's get ready to jump into episode two, which is the path of anger. Here we these designs allow for increased maneuverability and lower fuel consumption. And most important, shields to better protect your pilots and keep them on the field of battle for longer intervals. Aside from the cost, which would be astronomical, how feasible is the production of these starships? My base of operations is on Corvus, a planet ripe with raw goods and materials. As are many of the planets mm. in that star system. Thank you for your presentation, Magistrate. Unfortunately, we will not be moving forward on this deal with you. Damn, that's crazy. Why like, that? her designs are all about protecting the pilot's defense. Starfighters first came to our attention. They were causing quite a stir in some circles. Our interest was never in your plans. These fertile systems, however, now those are interesting. Mm. We will be there in short order. Going to repurpose the same right ideas. Oh my God! They're just going to suggest you return to your world and prepare for our arrival. See that need to protect people is still there. Like the loss of her family, the loss of her people. So she built this design to help, you know, mitigate loss. Because Tie Fighters are just fucking flying little pieces of shit. That just <laughs> you've changed the engine manifold. Why? The interior twin oh, iron yo. engines are inefficient when you're using that much power. It's simple logic. I suppose the Empire is going to steal my ideas as well as my resources. No. Look who it is. But I am curious to know about the mind that came up with them. My superior sends me to these meetings to search for people with a particular vision. I have a question for you. Why is it that you want to lend your substantial talents and vision to the Empire? Why for the glory of the Empire, of course. I see. Thank you for your time, Magistrate. The Path of Anger. What a gilded ass ship, man. Were you successful? No. But you promised us work and prosperity. The Empire wants only your resources, not your people, not my ideas. We trusted you, put our lives in your hands. When I found your village, you were nothing. I built your fortifications. I gave you strength to control the local systems. We worked for that success. You promised us wealth. We sacrificed for you. You lie, Magistrate. Everything comes at a cost, <sighs> including failure. Oof. <laughs> See that anger brewing in her and that anger brewing in those around her. They're all willing to turn on me after everything I've done for them. These are not my people. How could they ever be? Mm. Whoa, what the fuck? Wow. Whoa, what is that sword? Well, that sound design as it's banging off her Beskar spear. God damn. Whoa, that was a good one. Let's sweep around on the pole. Ooh, hitting the bells during the fight. Call the guards. No. 
Is this a, what is this a test or did you guys hire this dude? Damn, that was a good fight. Well done, Magistrate. <sighs> Interesting. Thank you, Rook. That will be all. Okay, I thought the town turned on her. I was like, that'd be one thing too if they're bitching about prosperity and they, but they wasted money on a hit. But I love I the singing of Beskar as it twirls. <laughs> I was like, I gotta go get my sword. History remembers the witches of Dathomir. Oh shit, where did he come from? <laughs> I was curious to witness a display of your particular skills. Why not experience them firsthand? My interest is based on admiration and ambition. Who are you? Admiral Thrawn. The Empire is a magnificent construct. However, it's not without its vulnerabilities. While many of my colleagues think on a grand scale, they often overlook where problems begin and they always start small. You speak of the growing rebellion. A sickness which kills both common man and king. Mm. We need minds like yours. I like that. If we are to eradicate them. Is Dane made it clear the Empire wants only this planet and its resources? Not my mind. Your designs are brilliant, but not cost-effective. Many in the Empire will trade lives for profit. Over time, this will create a weak and disillusioned military. The Empire will slowly crumble. Damn, man. God, I love Thrawn, man. I believe this is a question Captain Pallion already asked you. The answer was a lie. Men like his dame join out of greed and self-interest, others out of fear. Or with ambitions of power, answer again. Why do you seek imperial favor? Revenge. Years ago, my people were all but destroyed. Our culture, our beliefs are fading into memory. My anger gives me strength. And it is that strength that I offer the Empire. Offer accepted. Damn. Is Dane. Mm, Holy that shit. Is a portion of my fleet. They'll be at your disposal to begin your operation. What does this mean? Is it good? No, it means she won. Isn't that what you were just bitching about? What the fuck? Get out of here. <laughs> what? Were you just complaining at the beginning that, oh, you went to the Empire, they're not going to come here and you know, take our resources and all that kind of stuff that are gonna give us jobs? How dare you let the Empire come here and do that thing we were just complaining to you about at the beginning? Fuck off, get out of here. You don't deserve it to begin with. Now you're making me angry. <laughs> God, man, I love that. I love the build up. I love the test with Pelion being in this like uh, meeting as she's given this presentation. And you know, he could see that she thinks differently than what the Empire typically is looking for. Because of that, they're exploiting what she knows, what she delivers, and what she has to repurpose it where they feel that it would be necessary. And it's not by protecting the lives of their fighters at all. Rather than they want to use that technology in other places and forego the lives. And I love the way that Thrawn talked about the rebellion as this sickness. If you look at it on a macro scale, treating the symptom doesn't get rid of the cause. You know, you gotta go down to where it's starting. Where's the problem originate? You gotta fix those cracks. Otherwise they will splinter and falter as everything starts to expand and it will grow. It will get larger as things erode and evolve. You know, how her anger is fueling all this, how anger is brewing in the, the village or with her. The fact that even in the fact that they won, they're also disappointed, even though they were bitching about it earlier, the blindness of that anger and what that can cause, as well as the hypocrisy that can be baked into anger in a moment as well. And obviously we know the Empire's bad, but they don't know that yet, or I would presume that they don't know that. Otherwise, the opening sequence of this episode, they wouldn't have been like, well, you, you promised they would come and that they would help us. So now they're here 
to do that exact same thing. So like, it, it's like they haven't yet hit that wall to feel the way they feel right now. They're just mad that she succeeded, even though the entire reason they were mad at her to begin with was that they devoted her lives to her and then seemingly it did not pay off in the way that they had hoped or the way that they, she had promised and that except by the end of the episode, it did, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure about that one. And then Thrawn here talking about this and like, hey, I need people with me that don't think like all these other people. I will make the Empire strong. I will fix this. And he's like, he's got his grand vision of what the Empire can be or should be. And I love the way he just kind of fits into this thing. He's an, he's, I will say, I really, he's a phenomenal antagonist they built on this little connection here about why he sought her out because he is fascinated with these force cultures he values the knowledge he values these things like he talks about in rebels is like knowing the enemy and knowing their art knowing the people is exactly what you need to know to combat your enemy he could take you out psychologically he can figure out how you might think how you might react like all these different little puzzle pieces and we're getting to see like the little foundational elements of that and why he sought her out. And I think this gives us a little bit more of the building blocks of her transition towards her ultimate goal in the end once she has these visions and dreams of Peridia and the Night Sisters there calling out for assistance, you know, the reclamation of her people because after having lost hers, she's still trying to find a people and even as much as she tries, she's not really fitting in. They call her witch. They were more than willing to just let her die in this situation to spare them this rule. You know, so like she's just like, these aren't my people, you know. I think she's been trying to find somewhere to fit in and it just isn't working out and it just leads her further down this path. It brews this anger that she has towards maybe just the world itself, anyone outside of her, her anger towards her past, her present, and her idea of what the future is at the moment until Thrawn shows up and offers her a way to focus that. I, I feel like the only thing that I have a problem with in this episode specifically is just the rationale of this mob. But then again, they're upset and they're angry, and sometimes when you're upset and you're angry, you don't make any sense. So maybe it works. Maybe it works. But with that all said, let's get ready to hop into episode three, The Path of Hate. Now I'm wondering, though, because, again, I still haven't looked ahead. You know, the the whole thing is, you know, fear, anger, hatred, suffering. So then that leaves two episodes that I'm not sure what the titles are going to be. And unlike uh, Tales of the Jedi, we had an Ahsoka episode, Dooku, 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 Ahsoka, Ahsoka. Here we've just been Morgan, 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 and I guess the last three will be Barris, Barris, Barris. Some time has passed, it seems. Wonder how much time has passed, though. Oh, we jumped ahead quite a bit. Why have you come back? I'm now an ambassador of the New Republic. The New Republic? Yes, the Galactic Empire was defeated. You don't know? Oh, they've been suppressing that information. Some news reaches us more slowly than others. Mm. Hmm. I see things have only gotten worse since I left. I should have never allowed the witch to take over. What has Magistrate Elspeth done? No one has seen her in a long time, yet her guards keep us working night and day. I will speak with her. I don't know if that's a good idea. Do not worry, Wing. Things have changed. Everything has changed. Maybe even Magistrate Elspeth. Let's see. Extremely optimistic. I'm coming with you. But this episode is hate, so let's see how that brews. Already see a fostering in his heart somewhat. Ooh, that sound. Ooh, God, it does something. Here on behalf of the New Republic, I brought a petition to the Senate for Corvus to become a member planet. They are willing to accept. However, first you must step down and relinquish your control of the local systems. You cannot stop what has begun. No one can. I've had a vision and I will fulfill my destiny. 
I won't allow that to happen. So it started even all the way back then. Statement. Your crimes are well known. Step down willingly. Turn yourself in. I can help you get a fair trial. Don't burn everything down around you. Ooh. My world has been burning since I was a child. Why should this one be any different? Yeah, she's locked in on what she wants. She doesn't care who she has to go through or take Kill with her along the way. God damn. God damn. Love that you shot as the doors were closing. Your, your people need you more than I do. Damn. All, right. All alone now. Mm. You gonna able? You gonna get that signal out in time? Doubtful. Oh, wow. That explosion cooked her. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Sending a message. It's the origin of why the trees look all fucked up when we get here next time. I understand that you must be frightened, but I'm here to reassure you. You are all under my steadfast protection. The fires will continue burning. You will work night and day, but you do so knowing that you will be part of an effort that will save our galaxy from ruin. Oh shit, she's alive. <laughs> or at least on the way out. Be brave, no matter how dark things get. I can't. Help will come. But you must be ready to do your part. Even if it is small. Hmm. You can make a difference. Who is this? I received your distress signal. Come in. Who is this? Damn. No one is coming. That voice sounded real familiar. What a shot. I love her and the flames, man. Okay, who was uh who was the voice in the comm? It was Bo Katan. It was Katie Sackoff. I was like, that's why I recognized it. I'm not exactly sure the hate connection here, other than they hate the situation that they are currently living in. <laughs> like that's the only the only real thing here, and other than their own. It wasn't even like, she's not even fueled by hatred at this point. Maybe it's her hatred for the people that are just not her clan, not her people. These people that are just here because she's got her foot on their throat and they have to be. Maybe it's this hatred of the life that they've led or maybe the possibility of everything that she's tried to build with the empire having fallen through and now it's just her and Thrawn up until this point. Well, Thrawn's in the wind at this point. You know, she's still, you know, hearing these visions, these echoes from afar and still carrying on that effort to make that a reality. So it's interesting to see where that all lies. So it's like, is it the hatred that has just brewed in her heart since then, the hatred of the people of her, you know, and then we have this one person who got out before things got worse, who came in here with the New Republic, this beacon of hope and holding on to that hope and trying to bring that into a place where hope is just not allowed. She will stamp that out and she will burn it to the ground. You know, burning the beautiful foliage to the ground to send a message like hey there's no escaping there's fires on every side you guys are here you will work it's nice getting to spend some time with this character getting to flesh out her backstory a little bit more getting to understand her a little bit more i still feel like there's a lot here to unpack a lot of the time in between these key moments that we're seeing that they could definitely still kind of mine and fill in but i like what we're seeing I will say that compared to Dooku's story, if we want to compare the two, and I'm not sure which one would be more aligned, you know, with Barris, I feel like that might echo Ahsoka's a little bit more closely, but 
like if we're comparing the two, there's a lot of nuance to Dooku's story, a lot of very layered complexities about his character, his motivations, his struggles with the decisions that he's making and the decisions that he's made, as well as the lessons that he's imparted to those around him. While it's great that we're getting this information and then this expansion on this character, it just still feels like we're still just like right at the surface. Like we're not really hitting a lot of these deeper things other than the fact that this is all rooted in her fear of losing her people and now how that is manifested into anger and then hatred. Even though, again, it didn't really come off as hatred to me in this episode. It was still a great little story and a great little snapshot of this period and how things have changed and where she's at and how those are kind of wrestling with one another. You know, her ambition, her goal, her control with the failure of the Empire and the encroachment of the New Republic and the friction between those two forces. Aside from that, you know, it, it just, it still feels very surface level uh, compared to tales so far. But again, we're only halfway through and that's only one story. With that being the closing point here, I just, it doesn't feel as cohesive, if that makes any sense. Maybe we'll get a clearer picture once we get into Barris' story, what the overarching, like, thematic element is. But with that all said, guys, let's get ready to jump into episode four which uh, looks like we're changing up the naming scheme. This episode is called Devoted. Order 66 is being executed right now. Tell me what's happening. Has there been an attack? Just be glad you're not a Jedi anymore. But tomorrow, they won't exist. Stand up, Ferris Offie. Look who it is. Fourth sister. Lynn? Lynn! I don't go by that we name. We got a name. Anymore. Things have changed. You are serving a life sentence for crimes against the Republic. But at your trial, you accused the Jedi of murder and treason. It seems you were right after all. The Jedi tried to assassinate Chancellor Palpatine. What does this mean for me? I'm here to present you with an opportunity. A rare and precious opportunity. Will you take it? <laughs> Will you take it? <laughs> It's still being constructed. Other prospects? You're here because the Jedi failed the Republic. And now that they're gone, we must build a new covenant to ensure the security of our empire. What empire? The Republic <laughs> has been reorganized. You missed a couple things, by the way. Out of chaos, Emperor Palpatine will bring order. His vision must be protected at all costs. Prove yourselves worthy of this task today, and you may join us. For now, you may go to your quarters. I advise you not to leave until we meet again. We need to get out of here. What are you talking about? What he said back there? Doesn't sound any better than the Jedi, Dante. I wouldn't. Why should we listen to you? What about us? What happens when they find out you're gone? That's not my problem. Well, good luck. Oh, whoa. That is haunting and gorgeous all at the same time. Follow me. Your friend had a terrible accident. Sadly, we must proceed without him. Oh. Wow. You told him not to go. You were wise. Please take the boy. Barris, come with me. The lessons you learn from the Jedi greatly limit your power. But I will help you overcome this weakness. I don't understand. Take this weapon. 
and attack me. You're going to learn to harness your negative emotions. I don't need to be. Go ahead. You're holding back. It makes you predictable. Stop fighting like a Jedi. Better. <laughs> now I feel I'm getting closer. Oh! <laughs> he just rearranged her spine there. Mercy only breeds defeat. Perhaps you're not as powerful as we. <laughs> the definition of an evil base. <laughs> I must confess, you've impressed us. You both have. Yeah, he's gonna have to fight him. One man standing by the end of it all. Unfortunately, there is only room in our ranks for one. And so you must face one final test. <laughs> you may choose not to fight, of course. In which case, both of you will die. Oh, whoa. We don't have to do this. They won't kill us. They killed Amar, didn't they? Got a point. What are you doing? Embracing the future. Oof. Oh, shit. She never even needed the saber, man. She learned well from him. Welcome, sister. Brothers, sisters, enter. Hey, there's no name in Merrick. A reaper from Overwatch. <laughs> I forgot how badass that guy looks. And I don't that's, I don't think we ever even got a name for him, man. Now it is time you meet your new master. Hell yeah. I look so good. That almost looks real. Rise, Inquisitors. Long live the Empire. Long live the Empire. Damn. That was some good shit, dude. That was some good shit. I like that a lot. You know, the temptations, the the emotions riling up and then the complications of her getting what she wanted in the end. But maybe it's the way that it went about it that was a little conflicting being melded into this and just kind of by default winning out in the end and becoming an inquisitor. She seems not still completely devoted. I don't know. I'm very curious to keep an eye on her story, but I love this like seeing like the audition process of how one makes it into the Inquisitorious. Because we're seeing also that the structure, their home base being built, like it's not there yet. So like she's one of the first ones that got brought in. By the time Ahsoka faces off and kills the one with the Reaper mask, I'm wondering like if his rank had been filled in because they said we only have one open slot. So how many are here? How many are there at any given time? because we know Merrick dies because he was a resurrected corpse that was in that armor. He's been dead a long time. And we know Ahsoka kills the other one. And then there's other 
so that we see fill in those ranks. So I'm just wondering, like, I just got so many questions about all this, especially with the foundational elements of this. So with the fourth sister has been here from the get go. She's one of the originals. Surprised that they didn't acknowledge that uh, the Grand Inquisitor was one of the temple guards that arrested her. Inconsequential here, but it would have been interesting to see her wrestle with the fact that her jailer initially is now here welcoming her with open arms it would be an interesting conversation to see play out but i'm curious to see where this one goes with that one down let's go ahead and jump into episode five this one's realization hmm our target is known to be working with a local rebel cell so don't let your guard down from the intel it seems unclear whether a jedi is involved or not the grand inquisitor wouldn't send us here if the intel wasn't credible you should know better than to question that we don't question stuff around here. We do everything blindly. It's the Empire for you, man. These people have nothing. How can the Emperor allow this to happen? When the people show loyalty to the Empire, they will be allowed to flourish. But not before. Then let's complete our mission and allow them to prosper. So she's kind of on a journey to realize, well, maybe I fucked up. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe I sided with the wrong people here in the end. Where is the Jedi hiding? There is no Jedi here. We're here to protect you. The Jedi are dangerous. They can control your minds, make you do things you otherwise would not. You know something. It's all right. You can tell me. Is that better? Will you tell me what I want to know? Do not press our patience on this matter. I give you my word. There were never any Jedi here. It's okay. They're hiding in the mountains. You did the right thing for everyone. <sighs> Sister. See, the differences in their approach, the too, is really stark as well. You gave me your word. Oh. People are judged by their actions. Well then. Wow. Oh my God. That was fucked up, man. As Inquisitors, we bring order, not chaos. Rebellion creates chaos. Eliminating it brings order. But creating fear will turn the people against us. They were already against us. Now those who witness our strength will respect it. No, that's not how that works. <laughs> Man, she just got straight to work. Oh, that's cool. The lighting. You need to surrender. You're a traitor and a murderer. Oh, you expect me to believe you? The Jedi are gone. They paid for their hubris, but you don't have to. Set down your weapon. Come with me. Turn yourself in. You have a chance for a new life. No, she does not. <laughs> Aren't you tired of running? I'm so tired. And I feel so alone. You're about then to get a me. saber through the back. They were never going to walk out of here alive. They're still alive. 
We need to get them to the ship. We can save them. Forget it. Let them die. They were about to surrender. Irrelevant. The Jedi are a threat to be eradicated wherever they are found. Then you have one Jedi left to deal with. Oh. Wow. That's a big step for her to self-declare that right then and there. Realizing that she was wrong about what she believed. I won't let you die. You're not alone. Damn. Wow. Okay. The revelation is not that hard to come to when you're in a situation you're seeing that the side you signed up with, it's a little fucked up. You know, murdering that entire village, killing a surrendering person. You know, you start to question like, eh, what am I doing here? You know? So like, it's, it's kind of interesting to see that play out in this way. Though, her declaring herself a Jedi does feel a little, I don't know, out of place in a way because it, she still hasn't, encountered anything that challenges her idea of what the Jedi were. She just knows that what she is part of right now isn't doing the right thing either. So I'm not sure exactly why she's just like, ah, you got one more Jedi to deal with now, rather than just like Ahsoka being like, I'm none of these things at this moment. Though I guess you could argue that she's just taking that back. While the Jedi Order maybe had it wrong and she still doesn't agree with what they were doing, one can still be a Jedi but follow a different path than the Order as a whole. Maybe it, she's declaring that herself, taking that back for herself and choosing to live the way that the Jedi were supposed to have been living because that's something also that Ahsoka is doing in the present day as well, that we see her in The Mandalorian and past that, her arc was accepting that part of herself and choosing the road to correct the mistakes of the past, taking the lessons that she's learned along with the failures, both her own and of the orders, to hopefully make something better in the end. So maybe that's the sentiment. You no, know, seeing, you know, what she wanted, what she wanted was the Jedi removed from the equation because of what she thought they were, and then seeing the truth of the matter is this new force that is now in power is just so much worse than she could have imagined. We just handed the reins over to an even worse power. We're getting like a perspective of how the Empire was beneficial to someone and their goals and aims. And meanwhile, someone who became part of it very early on and very early on realized what it was was not what was being advertised, which is kind of interesting. And I'm wondering how this... uh. This last episode is going to close things out, so I guess we will go ahead and find out. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into episode six, The Way Out. What the hell? Seek the healer. Follow me. Come. She will see you. Is that what Barris has become now? A healer? Come forward. Yeah. You're safe here. Hmm. Wow. How much time has passed? You can see the age on her, man. There doesn't appear to be anything wrong with you. But the Empire came to our village and examined all of the children. They took samples of their blood. Something about Micah frightened them. They wanted to take him away, so we fled. I know of what you speak. Long ago, before the Empire, my family faced a similar situation, but it was the Jedi who came and took me. They trained me as their own. Are you saying our child is a Jedi? Your child, according to the old ways of the Jedi, has within him the potential. He would have been taken, like I was, to the temple and trained as a Jedi Knight of old. But now, 
Such gifts are a curse. You are right to run. The Empire will take your child and use them, if not something worse. Ooh, who's here? Wise mother, someone is coming. You are dismissed. Take this family and go. Use my starship. The coordinates are in the ship's computer. Where are we taking them? To see an old friend. She'll understand what to do. Aww. Once we've completed what you ask, we'll return. There is no need. You've done more Soka. than you should. Take everything I've taught you and pass it on. We are grateful for your knowledge and kindness. What can we do to repay you? Live. Now go. We meet of again. You. How ironic that when I am not seeking you, I find you at last. We had almost stopped searching. You should leave, Lynn. I have been sent for the child. Oh. Is this who you have become? This is gonna chasing down innocent children for your empire. I wouldn't expect you to understand. You're correct, Lynn. I do not. Do not. Call me that. Now step aside. It's gonna be like when she first fought the Grand Inquisitor, except now she's become way more enlightened now. I think that makes you predictable. Oh. <laughs> I love this so much. It's only proper to give them a head start. Stand aside. I will. But I warn you not to follow the child into that cave. You do not know the path. And if you go in, you will not come out. Fear is my ally, not yours. You choose your allies poorly. Mm-hmm. Once I am finished with the child, I will be back for you. Wow, I like that. Choosing to follow that path leads to her own destruction. She didn't have to fight her. Her end was decided the moment she sided with the dark side. You're just in a maze now. Oh, she's back and she doesn't oh good shit she can't focus either her fear her anger all these things are just distractions right now when if she was clear of mind she'd probably be able to find the way out <laughs> Lay down your weapon, and I'll show you the way out. Do you know what they'll do to me for my failure? It seems here is not your ally, mm. but your master. There is. I am here. Let me help you. don't want your forgiveness. I want you to show me the way out. You know the way out. You just have to accept it, Lynn. Stop calling me that. But that is who you are. There is no way out. That's what the Empire wants you to think. Oh, the last breath. I'm going to get you out of here. <sighs> What an insane way to wrap that up. So bittersweet, you know, 
seeing where Barris was in the beginning when we first met her, or at least not necessarily when we first met her, but when that first revelation came about, what her actual goals and aims were, her point of view that she saw, and seeing how this brings us all the way back to kind of resetting, you know, her perception of the Jedi, her perception of what the world or the Republic should be or shouldn't be, like, she 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 fell for the exact trap that Palpatine had been laying. You know, with all these little clues, with the clone troopers being ordered by the Jedi long before the Clone Wars even broke out, or the Separatist movements really got kind of riled up. You know, there's all these little seeds that just kind of, it would, for somebody to stumble upon them, and from an outsider looking in and stuff like that, like, it's very easy to put together that something fishy is going on, and she definitely took that to an extreme. She got what she wanted in the end, but what she got, what she wanted, isn't exactly what she thought it was. Because she, now she's seen what that's reaped, what this world without the Jedi Order is. Even though the Jedi are kind of responsible for their own blindness to this whole thing, they kept the balance pretty well for the most part until somebody got on the inside and they lost sight of things and tipped that scale real hard, real fast. And now she's, you know, just to survive, sided with these Inquisitors. And hell, she didn't even, she just was on the defense. She <laughs> she got the job just by playing defense in that bout. That kid was going full dark side. He's like, hey, I'm going to survive. I'm going to fight. But he just, he just didn't have that, that, that drive. Maybe even just the skill for that matter. You know, he took the plunge and then she became an Inquisitor. And you can tell that you know, the more she had to go out and do the job, her heart really wasn't in this either. Like, it didn't feel right. But again, what are you going to do? Die? <laughs> like, she goes along with it until too much is too much. When they go to that village, and she's like, aren't we supposed to be, you know, spreading peace, bringing order? And the mission statement apparently from the uppers is like, this is how we do it. Fear. Once they fear our power, they'll learn to respect it. I like the analogy that, uh, control by fear is like trying to hold sand tightly in your hand without any of it getting out. It's just not possible. It's going to seep out of the cracks, and what you're left with is just a mere minutia of what was originally there. Everything is going to fall away. Everything's going to get out of your hand when you're just clenching this fist around it all. And the ones that you're squishing, man, all you're doing is creating resentment. Fear, sure, but things that are afraid backed into a corner, will lash out. And if you destroy them all, what are you really the ruler of in the end? Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of fallacies that come with that whole mindset. Like the dark side itself, and initially, it may feel easy. It may give you a sense of power in the moment. And like with the training method, well, I love the way they brought that back around because that's what he was doing. The Grand Inquisitor was untraining her Jedi uh, thought processes, the way she was going into the fight, you know, not to kill, not to maim, just to, you know, win, just to win the fight, disable the opponent, you know, she wasn't going in there to just take him out, he's like, you're fighting like a Jedi, stop it, you know, give in to your emotions, give in to that power, that emotion, that need to survive, that need to kill the enemy in front of you, you know, that draw on that negativity and let it fuel you, the thing is, that can be very, very temporary. Sure, you can get a lot of that from adrenaline, from anger, from frustration, all that. But at the same time, it can also blind you intensely. That's why the dark side is so tempting. It's an easy course to power, but it's not the most powerful course, if that makes any sense. It's almost if you equate it to like uh, maybe like a test or something, maybe a project or something you get a good grade on, but you cheated. But and how do you feel about that? Did you feel like you earned it? Or what if it's something you did, we worked really hard on? You put in all the effort, you did everything the way you were supposed to, you put in all the hard work, and then it pays off. You truly earned the thing. What is the more satisfying of the two? That is basically the path of the light, and the dark side is basically the shortcut, where you're just skipping all the checkpoints, and you're just going to the end of the line. So yes, in that moment, she was able to get the edge up in that battle, again, against an unarmed Grand Inquisitor. You know, had that been a real fight, who knows how that would have actually went, but still, the sentiment is still all the same. You know, in a moment, she was able to get a boost, but for the long term, all it was doing was holding her back because we see that come to fruition when she finally does leave after she witnesses Lynn slaughter that village for no good reason and then slaughter somebody 
for just surrendering, which is, you know, just because they're a Jedi and they surrender, they are not going to get out of there. That's the naivete that comes into this whole position. But this is also, she's one of the first Inquisitors. So she saw this very early on for what it was. And she got out. The first opportunity she got. From there, she continued into fostering what she believed a Jedi should be. You know, I'm sure she still garners, like Ahsoka does, a lot of issues with the Order and how... They handled a lot of their training, the way they handled their relationship with the Republic, the way they handled a lot of things in general, because like Ahsoka's whole arc in her show is about being comfortable with her own past because she's afraid of those failures of her master and the failures of the Jedi infecting her, which keeps her from passing on what she knows. It stunts her growth. It completely halts her life. You know, she's basically just a ghost at that point until she learns that it's those mistakes that can inform her to do better than her master, do better than the Jedi that came before her. And I think Barris just kind of gets there way earlier because hell, fuck, <laughs> she joined the dark side right out of the gate and was like, okay, sorry, what What am I here? What did I sign up for? I saw the cookies, but uh, there's some murder happening right over there. <laughs> and she was kind of done with that. She was over that real quick. That's why she declared herself a Jedi in the end. Not the Jedi that she grew up as, but the Jedi that they should have been. And when Lynn finally comes again, she is still exactly where she was. She hasn't progressed. She hasn't gotten any better. She hasn't evolved because she's still on that dark path. She's still using those emotions. That power that came cheap didn't come with any of the lessons that would benefit you when going up against somebody who hard earned that shit. It just came full circle to that confrontation in the training area with the Grand Inquisitor where it's it's the exact opposite of what he's saying, but now she's the Grand Inquisitor in this situation. Like she was in complete control of that entire fight and even let her go chasing after her because she knew in her current state because of her experiences in the world and the hard-earned knowledge that she's got, she knew that if she goes in there blinded with her rage and her fear, she's not going to be able to find her way out through this maze. You know, had, again, like I mentioned earlier, had she been calm, collected, and trusted in the Force, she'd probably be able to navigate that and actually sense where they were and locate them before they could escape. But she couldn't. This was a great way to accentuate the differences between the path of the light and the path of the dark side. And much like with the Dooku storyline, though I do think like the Ahsoka storyline in the last se uh, season in Tales of the Jedi was still pretty solid. Much like that, I think the Dooku storyline was definitely the highlight of those episodes, at least for me. And for me, it's the Barris stuff here. I liked the Morgan stuff. It was fine. I just don't think it ever really got as deep or as layered as it could have been the themes and the ideas and knowing where it goes is interesting enough but this just blew that out of the water i thought they really nailed it with this storyline and again it's just bittersweet because at the end of all of that she doesn't get to see what gets built you know what the rebellion eventually achieves what ahsoka becomes in all this and it's just it's just kind of sad I don't know. Who knows? It is Star Wars. She did get stabbed. Sabine got stabbed pretty much in the same place. If she gets her somewhere, well, I don't know. She's in the middle of bumfuck nowhere right now. She was the only healer in the area. At least Sabine had immediate medical attention. So that's the other thing, too. People like to bring that back to Qui-Gon. Why do are so many people surviving these lightsaber uh, stabs and all that kind of stuff? It was like a lot of people that cling to life and hang on are channeling the dark side. You know, it's the unnatural way to prolong your life. A true Jedi, like Qui-Gon Jinn, who I think was probably the closest to like Ahsoka or Barriss Alfi in this moment than we had while the Order was in power. He, more than anybody, put the Force first, more than politics, more than anything else. That's what he put his faith in. When Yoda was trying to tell Anakin, is like, be comfortable knowing that life is temporary and we sh shouldn't stay attached to it. Our attachment is to the Force, and rejoice for those who return to it. So Qui-Gon would not want to linger. I mean, that goes against his entire principles. If that's their fate, that's their fate, and he'll resign it to him because that's just how he sees the Force. And all these other people that we've seen survive these types of wounds are people that are not necessarily content with the fragility and the temporary nature of our lives. Somebody like Qui-Gon, somebody who's really rooted in those teachings like Yoda says, is going to be content with that temporary nature and let himself go rather than try to fight. If that's the will of the Force, it's the will of the Force. Anyway, long tangent aside, I feel like 
given that similarity I find between her and Qui-Gon in this moment, even if she could get there in some reasonable amount of time, I don't think she's going to want to prolong that life. I think her death in this moment brings her peace because her death also is the catalyst for bringing Lynn back to the light, potentially. So it could have meaning in a way she's she's kind of a martyr for her own perspective, for her own point of view. And I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, long winded thing to say maybe she could survive, but I feel like she probably would just kind of concede to the wound is what I'm saying. Great fights, great imagery, beautiful animation, beautiful music. I just wish the Morgan stuff was a little more interesting. I really liked the first episode, really liked all the stuff on Dathomir, though. A little confusing at additions there, but all the things aside, this Bear Sophie stuff was really fucking good. <laughs> anyway, guys, what'd you all think? I'd love to hear from you all. So sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We're carrying the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. If it did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. For everyone to see the full length reaction, as always, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you're a member of the channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Manny Share, Ryan Karen, your course, Scott Melita, Robert Ongiano, Jeffrey Hale, Jake Contrell, Eric Official, Casey Wood, Russell Crockett, Justin Smith, Amy Becker, Brendan Boyd. Thank you guys so much for continued support. But that's it for this video. Guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. But until then, may the force be with you always. Take care, everybody.